I led the first American documentary team into Chernobyl about a year and a half after the accident. These are my strongest impressions. The reactor director showed me footage from a helicopter looking straight down into the core at a red glow. It was graphite from the reactor core burning at 2,000 to 5,000 degrees. I asked, was there a moment when you thought you couldn't put the fire out? In fact, it was a fear. Brave firemen were the first to respond. They could only stay 30 seconds on the roof because of the radioactivity. But knowing the risk, they rotated to extinguish what they could. The first firemen to respond died from acute radiation poisoning, about 30 of them within a few months. They were named heroes of the Soviet Union. 600,000 volunteers came to Chernobyl to help clean up the radioactivity that fell around the reactor. They were housed in barracks, fed sumptuous meals, and each day did what they could. They scraped a foot of topsoil with radioactive dust off a circle 10 miles in diameter. They rode in buses going to work every day. The buses never left the prohibited area. One day, Dr. Richard Wilson, a physicist from Harvard who was part of our team, laid his Geiger counter on the seat next to me, and the needle immediately pegged. I thought, of course, radioactivity would be concentrated from the workers sitting here day after day. I wondered if they told the volunteers. Now, 30 years after the accident, the death toll is still hard to pin down because of long-term radiation effects over a widespread area. The town built to house workers for the Chernobyl reactor in 1985, Pripyat, is still abandoned, but the forest and the wildlife have returned. Is Chernobyl an image of the past or future? That question may be answered in decades to come.